I was getting, well, we should slash marker this. Slash marker. Dolls. I have to say, I was getting torched on r slash hockey. Someone made a post on r slash hockey. The, the big hockey subreddit. It's not as big as r slash soccer, I'm just saying. And it said, uh, how much do Canadians care about the hockey world championships versus the Stanley Cup playoffs and the Olympics? And then one of the top comments was like, I watched a streamer say that Canadians don't really care about the world championships because their best players are still in the Stanley Cup finals. But uh, like the best players that are still remaining in the playoffs are Finnish. So how, make it make sense. Okay, and then literally a person just below that replied and said, I saw Northern Lions say that as well, but Finns get wins. Bro, it's one time, okay? Like, Finland is probably, well, Sweden is like my number two team, internationally speaking. We have a Vancouver-Sweden connection. Naslin, the Sedins, the Elias Pettersson, et cetera, et cetera, the second Elias Pettersson. Finland would be my number three, but I, why, why are you taking shots at me in an unrelated subreddit, okay? I get that the, the Finns are doing great in the NHL this year. I'm just telling you Canadians don't care about the Hockey World Championships. You know why? Because they happen in May. Watch this. We, we've been in darkness for seven months. I can finally see the light. I, it's, it's gorgeous outside. It's blue skies and sunshine. It's 27 degrees Celsius. My seasonal affective disorder is finally clearing up. The sun rises before I wake up. It sets after I go to bed. That's why we don't care about the world championships, okay? We're drinking 33 acres of sunshine in Jonathan Rogers Park right now. Come, you're invited. You're invited. Just be cool. Anyway. You go to bed at 9? On a, on a good day, yeah. Ideally, it'd be a little earlier. Okay, $42 billion, coffee means we're close to the equator, crude petroleum, 42, I mean, you know, it's got to, we got to guess Venezuela. If it points to oil and coffee, we have to go Venezuela first. It is southwest of Venezuela. It's um, Colombia. Colombia is not really, I mean, it could be Ecuador. I feel like Ecuador doesn't have $42 billion of exports, though. But you know what I don't see? Wait, it was Ecuador the other day. I'm thinking of, like, Bolivia. Maybe it's Bolivia. But you know what I don't see? I don't see seafood, which would indicate that maybe this is one of the parts of South America that is not coastal, which could be Bolivia. Ooh, horrible guess. Is Bolivia not where I'm thinking it is? <laughs> I thought it was like, you know, you got, keep in mind my camera's mirrored. You come in, boop, Colombia. East of that, Venezuela. West of Colombia, you got like your Peru. Goes down to Chile. Argentina's east of that. Uruguay's north of that. Then you got Paraguay somewhere. Bolivia's somewhere in the middle. Okay, I got my, my scaling is all messed up here. $42 billion. I feel like it's not Brazil. It seems low for Brazil. I would say, and that, well, what, could it be, it's not going to be Colombia. Well, it could be Colombia. It wasn't, it was literally Ecuador yesterday, wasn't it? Nine is, okay, it's between Venezuela and Ecuador. Is it Colombia? Am I crazy? It's just Colombia. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Why are you skipping Colombia? I don't know, just, because it's, Colombia is not really south of Venezuela. I get, it's just an intricacy of the way that they calculate the vectors here, but, like, yes it is. No, it's, it's west of, it's direct west. It's north, it's west, it's southwest, it's, it's distance to the capitals. See, that's where I got lost there. It's apparently, it's distance to the, the capitals. It literally says Coke. That's a byproduct of, of, of petroleum production. That's not cocaina. That's not the Tuco Salamanca, okay? It's not the stuff they put in a cough syrup in Georgia in 1841, okay? 
Did you see that post that was like, here's a real bottle of cough syrup from the 1800s? It said every ounce of it has four and a half measures of alcohol, four measures of uh, chloroform, four, me four measures of like morphine, and I forget what the, the, third, the fourth one was, but it was like people these days, cannabis, cannabis indica, yes. People these days be like, oh, I'm worried. My cell phone salesman reeked of marijuana when he was selling me my iPhone. Is the world going to hell? Back in the old day, they'd be like, we don't even got sick days. Get, drink your, uh, get crossfaded and then go down into the coal mines. I bet it worked. I, there's no way you weren't on the fucking moon after you took a, a dram of cough syrup back in the Wild West. I'm a little jealous, honestly. Start me off in Colombia. That's pretty good. Pretty good, Fokker. 940 kilometers. Why don't you take me down to Chile? Chile's cooler. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Uh, idiot. Did you take me to, like, um, Guyana? That's warmer. Oh, no. We're, we might be in the Caribbean. Uh, take me to Guatemala, though? Maybe it's Central America? It's adjacent to the answer. Take me to El Salvador. It's also adjacent to the answer. Are you Nicaragua? You're also adjacent to the answer. Cool. So this is Panama, Costa Rica. You must be Honduras. Oh, let's go. Come out with your hands up. I've got you surrounded. And then it's the dude, you know, the Wojak, but he's like, uh, he looks all like tweaked out of his gourd. I'm Honduras. I'm Honduras. That's what he's saying. Anyway. You know the one? You know what I'm talking about? Not every meme can be a winner. Can I tell you something my wife told me today that, that kind of blew my mind? She hit me with a, a question I've never imagined myself ever hearing. Um, she was making a ham and cheese sandwich to send our daughter with to daycare. And um, she said, should I put strawberry jam on it? And I said, what? No. And then I said, don't let anybody ever hear that you asked me that question. And then she said, when I was in school, the school lunches were ham and cheese sandwiches with strawberry jam on them. And I said, no, they weren't. That doesn't make sense. And she said, they were. And I said, okay, okay. Maybe they were. I'm not going to say it sounds bad because I've never had it. I'm just going to say it's, I've never heard of it. It's called the Monte Cristo. Sounds like a sandwich mouth would like. Thank you for the Costco questions, by the way. I did go to Costco yesterday. I did also see on the subreddit, somebody said, is this NL? And then the, the, it was a screenshot of the Peloton leaderboard. Their name was My Booty Hurts. They were hashtag Costco exec member. And then the location was not in daycare, male 40s. Now I'm telling you, this is not me, but it's that if you're some, they're probably watching this right now. If that's you, I was laughing when I saw it. I thought that was very good. I have no idea what country this is. I think you are France minus uh, Brittany, which means you're probably Germany. Nope, not even close. This is a country in Africa. This is Congo, hold the Democratic Republic. Nope. Uh, what? <laughs> what, what, what? Is this, it's in South America? Are you Bolivia? This is what Bolivia looks like in GeoGuessr, AKA on the map. Oh, it's north of Bolivia. Are you Colombia? <laughs> Dude, I'm in trouble. How can it be 2,000 kilometers east of Colombia? But also be north of Bolivia.
it must be is it is it Curacao? Did they do it? They don't do Curacao in this game. It has to be on the east coast of South America, but that really only leaves in the north Brazil, and this is not Brazil, I think. So it could be one of the countries on the north side. You've got Guiana, you've got Suriname. Let's try Suriname, and then we can go to the Guianas if it's not Suriname. It is Suriname, okay. I honestly thought this was going to be like Poland or something, but there's a lot of countries that kind of look like this. It does look like Gengar. You can see it's like Gengar, and he's wearing like a backpack, and then like this is where his face would be, and he's kind of like tilted towards the, he's looking this way. His eyes are looking this way. I can totally see it. A gibble. It looks a lot like a gibble. Very true. Can I just say if I if I didn't get asked, but if I did get asked by GQ to name my top 10 video games of all time for that like definitive list, I'm telling you, here's here's some stuff you would have seen on the list. No doubt Binding of Isaac uh, Repentance would be on there. I would probably just lump it under the Binding of Isaac saga. Slay the Spire would 100% be up there. You know what would be up there that would blow your mind? Perhaps, if you weren't thinking about it, Pokemon Go. It's not even really a game, and I think that's why I like it so much. Just in 2023, I bet I have... Well, how many days in are we? We're like 140 days into 2023. I bet I have 140 hours of Pokemon Go this year. And almost all of it is just going, and it's just, it's just nice. It's, and I'm not saying that because I caught a shiny um, Bunary two days ago. I caught another shiny yesterday. I don't even remember which one it was. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm getting pretty good. Okay, January 14th, 1994. We're going to know this movie. It's been in theaters for eight weeks. That's a lot of money for 94. 20th Century Fox. Actor is Robin Williams. 1994. That's probably a Mrs. Doubtfire jam. Boom. Okay. There's 160 points right there. Sony TriStar. It's been in theaters for four weeks. It's made $14 million. That's pretty bad. The actor is Tom Hanks. January 1994, I don't think it's Forrest Gump. I feel like that would be like a summer drop. It could be, I feel like Sleepless in Seattle was more of like a 93 sort of jam. It could be a league of their own. Let me see actress, actress two, actor two. Denzel Washington is Philadelphia. It's Philadelphia, of course. Okay. No one would take on his case until one man was willing to take on the system. So true. I was there. I was the system. I was not the system, for the record. <laughs> I was five. Um, barely. New Line Cinema opened to $8 million, but grossed $6 million. Make it make sense. Actor is Christopher Reed. Genre is comedy, music, romance. Tagline, this bachelor party is going to bring down the house. Is Christopher Reed part of Kid in Play? Could this be House Party? Or House Party 2? <laughs> Don't make me do it, dude. I'm good. How many guesses? House Party 3? Oh! <laughs> the, the meme of the dude swinging the pickaxe and he stops just before he hits the diamond. Oh, 100% of gamblers quit before they have their big jackpot. Okay. This party's going to bring down the house. Bernie Mac? I, I've never seen a single house party movie. But I know that one of the guys has the hair. You know what I'm talking about. It's like really... It's kind of like Marge Simpson type hair. I used to see it in the, in the Jumbo video. Warner Brothers, 34 million, actually is, is growing at the box office. Great word of mouth. Actor, Jack Lemmon. This is Grumpy Old Men 1. 
I mean, come on. Jack Lemmon, Walter Matthau, Sophia Loren. This is a classic. For decades, next-door neighbors and former friends John and Max have feuded, trading insults and wicked pranks when an attractive widow mo Oh, this isn't Sophia Loren. Sorry, this is Anne Margaret. Sophia Loren's in Grumpier Old Men. My mistake. When an attractive widow moves in nearby, their bad blood erupts into a high-stakes rivalry full of naughty jokes and adolescent hijinks. I've seen this. I don't remember anything about it, but I'll tell you, I have seen Grumpier Old Men as well. My grandparents love this movie. Okay, Warner Brothers, 81 Millie, stars Julia Roberts, 1994. I think she do be walking down the street. No, it's not Pretty Woman. Could be the Pelican Brief, another Julia Roberts, Roberts classic. It is, it is the Pelican Brief. It is the Pelican Brief. That's a pretty good run there, 73rd percentile. This is my, this is my era, man. I've never seen that one either. These are the kind of movies they go to see in, uh, in Seinfeld. Two tickets for Chunnel, please. What's the one that's a, a slow-burning, erotic uh, thriller? The Tropic of Capricorn is another one, but I forgot about it. Rochelle, Rochelle, that's it. Rochelle, Rochelle. Oh, man. Classic. Okay, Cine 2 Nerdle. I don't know why I said it like that. Oh, from Milan to Minsk. I, I, actually, that's the one. It's a, a, a girl's erotic journey from Milan to Minsk. Okay, average is 3.8. That's another tough uh, Cine 2 Nerdle. You go clockwise or counterclockwise in uh, Pokemon Go? I'm a clockwise. I'm a clockwise spin in Pokemon Go. It seems hard to do. I'm a right handed spinner in Pokemon Go. It seems like wrong to do counterclockwise. But, ew, I'm a counterclockwise. I'm a counter. Everyone's a counterclockwise. I'm the only person spinning clockwise. I'm like shooting left handed, right handed. I got left-handed bowling spin with my right index finger. That's weird. Okay, let me, let me think here. Uh, racist Clint Eastwood. This is um, Gran Torino. Jesse Plemons, Kirsten Dunst TV show. This is Fargo. This is Fargo season two. Jesse Plemons, Kirsten Dunst TV show. This is Fargo season two. Brian Cranston, best picture, Tehran. This is um, Argo. Jim Carrey reality TV show. This is um, The Truman Show. Clint Eastwood, racist, car, Gran Torino. I, why did I move Ben Affleck? Go back. Okay, hot swap me. We got eight left. Dog, Power, Kirsten Dunst, Jesse Plemons. That's The Power of the Dog. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that movie. I didn't know Kirsten Dunst was in that. Let me think. I mean, Jesse Plemons' car... <laughs> I don't know why a car would be in there. Wasn't Jesse Plemons' racist TV show, Brian Cranston, just Breaking Bad? Oh, you know, there's probably... Uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the Breaking Bad movie... Which is Jesse Plemons' car, Brian Cranston. TV show? Yes, okay. I, don't, I haven't seen it, but I don't remember. El Camino, that's it. El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. Let's do the reversal. We're kind of cooking today. Have you noticed that? Average on the reverse, 4.2 out of 5. Jesse's name is Jesse. No, Aaron Paul plays Jesse. Jesse Plemons plays Todd. And we hate Todd. Boo! 
boo, we boo Todd when he's on the screen. He's a bad guy. But Jesse Plemons is a compelling actor. He's a very compelling actor. How would that be profitable for Frito-Lay? Et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Million Dollar Baby, Warrior, movies about combat sports. Sh Dinner for Schmucks, remakes of French movies, possibly. Creed is also about a combat sport, but I also see movies about cats in here. Puss in Boots. And... Um, Garfield. I see Steve Carell movies, Minions, The Rise of Gru, Beautiful uh, Boy, Dinner for Schmucks, Crazy Stupid Love. And then movies that take place in Europe. Maybe Oh, no, no, no. Movies with um, Eddie Redmayne in them. Okay, so we got eight swaps left here. Let's use your brain. Animated films? No, because none of these are animated. Biopics? Million Dollar Baby, is that a real Warrior might be a real story. Inside Lewin Davis. Is it, is it like fake biopics? <laughs> also known as dramas? Maybe, these are all, but the Danish girl is also a biopic. I know people hate how I say it, right? okay? Just relax. Which one of you is real? If I had to guess, I would say Warrior is probably real. I think I would have heard a story about a female boxer cracking her head open on the stool. Spoilers. But which one of these is uh, <laughs> Inside Lewin Davis? Theory of Everything? It's not biopics. Or it's not these biopics, at least. Okay. Movies with the most realistic depiction of a panic attack ever put to film? Ryan Reynolds, Emma Stone. The problem here is I know nothing about like any of these movies. Paul Rudd, Steve Carell, Zach Galifianakis, Anne Hathaway, Russell Crowe, Julianne Moore. Antonio Banderas. Bill Murray. Taylor Swift, Rebel Wilson, Rebel Wilson, Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy. I think it's going to be a theme. I don't think it's going to be an actor. They're too disparate. What about like box office bombs? Dinner for Schm I don't know if this is a box office bomb. I don't know if any of these are box office bombs. What about Best Picture winners? No, I'm pretty sure Minions The Rise of Gru did not win Best Picture. I remember that about that year. Movies with swords. Movies with Michael B. Jordan in them. Movies with Eddie Redmayne in them. <laughs> Movies with the guy who's not Josh Gad, but I always get confused with Josh Gad. Six swaps remain. Movies that are spin-offs of an earlier franchise. Creed, Puss in Boots, Minions, The Rise of Gru, Fantastic Beasts, Where to Find Them. Eat me. Ah, we got there. Now, you can be honest with me now that I can look at chat. Warrior. Is, is Lewin Davis a real person or did they make him up? Not a real person. Is Garfield real? I'm just joking. Okay, so, so biopics was not a, a valid finish. Fair enough. Garfield's real. Garfield collecting all six Infinity Stones to eliminate all the Mondays in the universe. Today's movie to movie is still the same. Movie to movie is not rolled over. So we're going straight to guess the game. This, um, this feels like a Flash game. I feel like this is also like Shank. Shanky the Vegan's Nightmare. It's not Shank. I know this. It's like Alien Hominid or something. I know. I'm going to know this, Okay. To the concert, Metacritic score of 82. Okay, I don't know this. This is The World Ends With You. 
Two hits. Xbox One, PC, PS4, Switch, Mac. Streets of Rogue... Streets of Rage 4? It is Streets of Rage 4. Okay, I played this. I played this on my YouTube channel. Turns out I do know it. I don't know anything about The World Ends With You. Here's my, my process for ever guessing Persona or The World Ends With You. Is like, if it says, um, if it's a weird font that looks cool, but the Metacritic score is below 90, I guess the world ends with you. If it's a weird font that looks cool and the Metacritic score is above 90, I guess a Persona game. That's my, that's Robert Frost, two roads diverged in a yellow wood right there. Guess the game classic. Would my wife play this game? That's another, that's another thing that I ask myself when I see the screenshot. This is Digimon. That's, that's Megalodraymon. Digital Monsters. Digimon. That's, that's Megalodraymon. Oh, never mind. It's Pokemon Ruby. <laughs> That is not Megalo Draymond. That is Grudon. My mistake. He's my number one ground type uh, Pokemon in Pokemon Go. I've been using him to, to dominate some poison type Team Rocket grunts lately because there's double Team Rocket grunt bonuses right now. I don't know if, you, if anyone still plays Pokemon Go but me. There's like two people on my friends list that send me gifts. You can stop the bit. There's no bit. This is my life. Do I get two radar pieces? Yes, you do. You do get two. You do get two radar pieces. This is like Street Fighter 4. That's reuse Gi. I would recognize it any Oh, it's Marvel versus Capcom 3. It is, okay? I told you it was reuse Gi, man. That's reuse Gi right there. It's iconic. And then this is where perfect runs go to die. And that's okay. I embrace the process. New made with all natural flavors and colors. I was just, I've been thinking like Metamucil is just getting a little stale. Finally, they've got a premium blend. What I've always wanted is a fiber supplement made with new all-natural flavors and colors. I'm sick of drinking this orange stuff. So sick of drinking work orange stuff. Want to go home and drink home orange stuff. You know what I mean? Um, it's Dark Souls 2. It's a third-person game that's older than 2014. I'm going, like, I, why is the only thing that pops into my brain Jet Force Gemini? That's not a good, that's not smart. And it's on some of these platforms. How about the first Dragon Age? It is a single-player game. Oh, sorry, there was isometric gameplay in that. I didn't mean to be so stupid. It is an adventure game. It's a Zelda game. It's a Zelda game. Because that's the only game that is an adventure game. It's, or it's Portal 2. Those are the two, but Portal 2 is not a third person. It's The Legend of Zelda uh, Skyward Sword. It's not Skyward, it's not on the Wii, it's not on the Wii. Right, okay, that makes sense. Good point, good point. Came out in 2011. It's a third person puzzle game. It's like, oh, you know what? It's, um... There were a lot of these back then. Third person puzzle game. It's Cube. It's Portal 2, which is not third person. Hang on, I'm just sipping. I, I'm trying to, I don't want to glance at the can and have people think there's impropriety here. 2011, probably, I'm going to say it's PC indie 
puzzle game in the third person. It's Amnesia, a uh, The Dark Descent. It's not Amnesia, The Dark Descent. That's also first person. The hell is Linux? I'm joking. I'm joking. It's like it's Limbo is not third person. It's side scrolling. Inside came out too late. Limbo came out too early. I'm not sure. Dad, I knew your dad. It's a third person, which means 3D adventure game, which probably also has puzzles from this era. Not made by Nintendo, Bandai, or EA. It's Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. No, it's not. It's not Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out a, a nothing guess and then rely on my one-time clue. Oh, wait, hang on. We know it's an Unreal Engine game. That's helpful. Kind of. Because it means that they're not going to give us the engine on this one. Made by Rocksteady. It's Arkham City. Oh! Dude, we played it. We played the game right. We got ev we got greens in all the categories that don't give us great intel, and then the clue was forced to give us great intel. Oh. <laughs> uh. Game status played? No, I've never played Arkham City. I did go over to my friend's house once, and he I watched him play like a couple hours of Arkham City. And then we went back to doing like Dark Souls invasions, I think. One word, PG, 1987 comedy adventure, more beloved by the, uh, the critics than the audience. What is Fletch? Noisy, witless, and filled with unimpressive simulations of human tissue. A perfect example of small minds finding a suitable subject. Okay, Lawrence O'Toole. Holy cow. Noisy, witless, and filled with unimpressive simulations of human tissue. Holy cow. This guy went off, man. Next clue. It's good to have friends on the inside, you know? What is prison? It doesn't have the dark edge of Joe Dante's other works, but brilliant performances by Martin Short and Meg Ryan make it a joy from start to finish. Clifford? <laughs> a manic, overstuffed blend of sci-fi, comedy, and romance. Blank nonetheless charms thanks to Martin Short's fine performance and the insistent zaniness of the plot. I'm giving up my perfect. I simply don't know it. Inner space. This is a movie where um, Dennis Quaid shrinks down and goes inside of a person in a ship. Yes. Okay. I saw it on TV when I was like seven. So I'm gonna I'm gonna forgive myself for that. I'm gonna be kind to myself. And we go again. Okay, Chrono Guesser. It's crazy. The older I get, the more time like blends together. Like if you show me a, a picture of the Atlanta Olympics, I'm like, this is 1996. But if you say, what year did Fidel Castro die? I'm like, fucking, I don't know. <laughs> Sometime between... 2010 and 2020. <laughs> um, I think it was like 2017. 2000. Okay, I'll take that. Is that story true, by the way? Where the CIA sent an assassin to kill Fidel Castro and he seduced the assassin instead and turned them into like a Cuban... Agent? That's fucking baller, dude. My ass would have been killed for sure. I would have been like, don't kill me! Ow! Oh! 
You shot me! You ah, You shot me! I don't have it in me, man. I'm just going to be honest. Okay, this is um, Piccadilly Circle. No, this is Trafalgar Square. This motherfucker is why every fountain in the world has a sign that says not intended for humans to go into this water feature. This is uh, gravy tea, right? It's like a beef tea, Bavril, Levine. I don't know why this shit looks like like Children of Men or something. Like this looks like it's from a, a Mike Nichols movie. Like it's like they're they're here and then they're gonna zoom out and then there's gonna be text that says the new movie from Mike Nichols. There's something about this. I think it's the 1960s. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this be 1968 London. Holy fuck, it's 1953. <laughs> oh. That is, that's early. Fair enough. I don't know what you want me to say. I don't, I'm, I'm moving on. This is the mid-1950s. Give me a 57. The bear cupboard. This looks like it's the era, like, I think me and this child are roughly the same age. Although, actually, I'm going to guess I'm like three years older. I'm just going to say it, too. This might be Ireland, but this shit looks like small town Ontario. Can I see a license plate to confirm that? Is, can I get a confirmation? Is this an Ontario license plate? It kind of looks like an Ontario license plate. This shit looks like Gananoque, bro. Anyway, I, I don't think... I think this is 1996. Maybe 97, but put me in 96. It's 2001. Holy fuck. <laughs> it does look like Stratford. 2001. Scary face in the window? It's just a poster. Is there another, is there another window somewhere? I don't want to see it. It's like the New York Yankees in the 19... Whew, whew. I mean, this is, these are some old ass like British ads. Botany ties. They're wrinkle proof. Stadium favorite Ballantine Ale Beer. This is when England still owned the United States of America. So this has got to be like, like in the 1750s or something. Is that a water tower that says seven up on it? <laughs> It's like something out of idiocracy. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. I feel like this looks like um, Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, which is like the early 60s. Never mind, it's 1952. We, got, we kind of got washed today. Not a great day of chrono photo. Still, I had fun. I'm, I want to see, too. I want to source that image, because I'm pretty sure that one is Ontario. Presented by Tere Foster. Australian for beer. Is this shit, like, Hawaii? <laughs> I don't think they have, like, <laughs> evergreen trees in Hawaii. But the water is so beautiful. I mean, this... this buddy, you look like Michigan. That's what I'm going to say about you. Now, let me look at this compound. I don't know how much of this you get, but like, this is like a, a huge guest suite. That's probably like a 2,000 square foot guest suite. I don't even know what this is. It's like a garage that leads to a garage. The house itself, the private pond. I'm assuming you got to like a, I don't know if this is related to your property, but because the photo encapsulates it, I'm going to assume that it is. And then maybe you got like your own, I, I don't know. I'm going to say this is like, 18 million dollars. <laughs> That's too low. Holy fuck. Friday Harbor, Washington. Okay, so it's in, it's just south of me. I don't know where Friday Harbor is, but 
I mean, if it's in this, like, the rough Seattle area and it's on, like, I don't know, Lake Washington or the Pacific or something, like, we could be, we could be up here, man. Give me, like, a 25 million. Still too low. It's 13,000 square feet. <laughs> okay. Um, hit you with a 35 million real quick. It's too low. 11 beds, 3.5 baths. A lot of people would have issue with that ratio. I don't really have issue with that ratio. Take me up to 45 million. It's too low. 87.18 acre lot built in 2017. Three luxury houses included on the property. I guess I'll go up to 55 million. It's too low. On San Juan Island, 650 plus feet of beachfront, four ponds, bunkhouse, game house, two pools, tennis, and pickleball. <laughs> I have no idea, man. <laughs> it's not in my budget. You're absolutely right. That is, that is not in my budget. You know, I saw a tweet for the For You algorithm served me a tweet. That said, playing pickleball before 50 is a great way to ensure that you're below average in life in every aspect except your BMI. What, what do you say fuck me for? I don't even play pickleball, but I was just like, what, what, are you so full of anger? I imagine that if you play pickleball before the age of 50, you're also, you know, you probably have below average debt, if I had to guess. People hate pickleball? I just don't understand why, like that tweet was just, they were like a financial influencer and they tweeted that. I didn't even know who they were, but I hit them with the, I've been doing this a lot on the For You page lately. I hit them with the, uh, with a block because I was just like, I don't even know who you are. I just don't want to see any of your tweets ever again. Plus two. I saw another tweet served to me to the For You page that said, Oh, hell yeah, the Blackberry movie. I love movies about products instead of original stories. I was like, what is he coming for um, Nirvana the band, the show guy for? So the Blackberry's not even in business anymore. It's not like the movie is going to sell a bunch of Blackberries or something like that. He's just taking a shot at Waterloo, Ontario for no reason. They're still in business? Yeah, but you don't, you're not going to buy a BlackBerry. Aren't they doing like, you know, LiDAR for electric cars or something like that now? They're not, stop punching them while they're down. Anyway, we're not going to get this. I think it's 60 million. It's 75 million dollars. <laughs> Holy cow. I have, I have, I've not gotten a single housel this week. Okay, hang on. Oh, no, we got the Beals again, man. We're, we're back in time, guesser. Cash only? Brother, I don't want to know, isn't there, I, like, I'm not a, a mortgage broker, but I feel like when it comes to securing financing, it's like if you're buying a house that's under $10 million, you're probably going to get a mortgage. And that's a wide gulf, don't get me wrong. And then, like, if you're buying a house that's $75 million, I feel like that's a wasteland. There's, like, no, nobody would loan that to you. And then if you're buying Twitter for $40 billion, then you're back in getting financing from like world government's camp. Something like that? Is that correct? Anyway. This is George Harrison. Harris songs stay winning. It's also Ringo Starr. Just chilling. Ringo, what the fuck are those jeans, bro? Hey, Ringo, just one question. What are those? Anyway, um, Wonder Wall, Un film, do Alan, mm, Jane Birkin's in this? I gotta see that then. It's a realization de Joe Masso. 
I'm going to assume this is the Cannes Film Festival in southern France. I don't know where that is. I know where southern France is, but I don't know where Cannes is. I'm going to assume it's near Marseille. I'm just going to own that. And I'm going to assume this is, this is Harrison and Ringo in the late 1960s. This is like mid-spiritual awakening, not quite post-spiritual awakening. We take those. It is Cannes. Let me guess. The city is called Cannes? Nope. The city is called Le Cannes. <laughs> Noted. This is, wait, Invasion On. 4,000 ships hit coast. Invasion bulletins. Okay. She's like, what? How many? I feel, well, I, can we, it's the Chicago dailies. Okay, so this is the Daily Tribune. Allies invade France. Hey, okay, very good headline. This is, um, just give me a second. I don't know why I was about to put us in Moscow. Put us in Chicago, Illinois. Sounds great. And then, um, I mean, you don't want to mess this one up, but I feel like this is 1944. Why am I going into the 2000s? 1944, you got it spot on. We take those. 9,994. Almost went to 2004. You know what fucks me up? Is like, I, I always have to think about when D-Day is. And you know why? Because of fucking Battlefield 1942. Like, whenever anything is in World War II, and it's not the launching or the ending, my brain is just like... 42, brother. There were probably levels that took place like in the American invasion of Europe. World War II, 1942 to 1942. Like it's, it's fucked up, man. But I'm like 1939 is like it kicks off and then basically like 40 to 42, Germany is just going crazy. And then like 43, we start the, the pushback and the North African campaign and the Dwight Eisenhower. Then 44 is like the D-Day and then like 44 to 45 takes you to the end. That's my, okay, not we, but you know what. I, I personally, I am on the side of the allies. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if I, if I had to pick what side to be on, I would be on the allies. Controversial take. <laughs> this has got to be like the summer of love. Or wait, but maybe it's also like, no, this guy is fucking zooted, bro. Look at this guy. I think this is the summer of love. I think this is the Bay Area 1969. Put me in Petaluma. <laughs> I don't know where that is. It's 1971. It's like fucking Stonehenge or something. Holy cow. Hippies celebrating the summer solstice at the pyramid stage for Glastonbury Festival. <laughs> the Glastonbury Festival. Isn't that where, like, Calvin Harris and Imagine Dragons play? Oh, this is kind of sick. That's Ben Affleck, bro. This is definitely a gangster photo. I give it a certifiable gangster photo. Ladies in a damn dress. Got an umbrella that looks like it could kill you. This is like a James Bond weapon. Uh, it's snowing. Obviously, that's a rare event here. Ben Affleck's... It looks like he's driving at like 500 kilometers an hour. I feel like this is England. Because 
I have a bias to whenever something is clearly in Europe, it must be in England. I'm going to say this is London, 1964. 1966 in the Netherlands. We still got 9,000 points. Europe is easy mode. Titled, Snow Showers in March. I'm imagining that's rare. Can't recognize the canals. I'm sorry to tell you this, Netherlands, your canals are the second most favorite, uh, famous canals in Europe. The most famous canals in Europe are in Venice. Venice stays winning. Venetians, give yourself a little pat on the back. Netherlands, you're a strong second, don't get me wrong. Last known photograph of one of these individuals. I don't know which one. Does this kind of look like a young Sips? You know what's crazy is that there's like nothing wrong with this image. But because of like watching true crime stuff on Netflix over the last 10 years. Like this is a photo you see in the first episode of a 10 episode series about how like they never found her body they might just continue to be happily married now like this might be like a nice maybe it's their anniversary now so and they both play the game so they put it in the in the daily today it could be just a nice gesture but it definitely looks like you know that the trip to london was really like our chance to rekindle our relationship and then but tragic tragedy followed them even across the Atlantic. <laughs> dun dun next episode, you know? Anyway, I hope that I'm wrong. This is um not so big Ben. Which is somewhere somewhere over here. It's near like Waterfront Station or something. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. St. Paul's Cathedral. It's right here. It's, I'm assuming this is Elizabeth Tower. There you go. People who live in, in England, what is this called? What is this station called? Not Vauxhall. You know the one I'm talking about. If you wanted to get to the London Eye, you would get off at this station. Not Southwark, not Lambeth North, Waterloo? Isn't that in like France? Isn't that where Napoleon did surrender and I have met my end in quite a similar way? That chrono photo, hey, 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 embankment, thank you, not waterfront. Dad, chrono photo was in Ontario. You can't sneak Ontario by me. I'm, I'm going, I'm going 99. When men weren't afraid to wear sweaters until Chris Evans brought them back. My parents outside the palace of Westminster. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Cute photo. I'm just going to go ahead and say I would not be comfortable being in the position of being on the railing. Because, like, I don't think that my wife would lean back and push me into the water. But, like, I think there's a chance. <laughs> she's got some daycare aggression right now. I'm just... Oh, she's watching? I didn't. I was just joking. <laughs> Then you just swim. What if I what if I crack my head on Shakespeare's Abbey or something? Now this is a, is a nice house. Holy cow! I mean, from this angle, it kind of looks like um, like it's mid solving a Rubik's cube or something like that. But you don't often look at your house from like. 75 feet away and 50 feet in the air. So I'm not too... It's more, more interested to see how it looks once we get down to the, the ground, I guess. Um, 
It does look a little edited, right? Like the lights in the windows are not right. The tree lighting is like, yes, you're right. This is AI generated, man. This is not right. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is like an insane view. Let's start the bidding at 10 million and we can adjust as we see fit. It's in Mon Monteo, North Carolina. Okay, take me down to like two and a half million. That's not meant to be disrespectful. I just don't know the market. It's even lower. It's a single family house. If you got 18 kids, um, I'll take you down to 1.5. Five beds, four and a half baths. I'll take you up to two. I've got you in my sights. It's sold for two million. There you go. 7,000 square feet. It does look like when you tell AI to make a Wes Anderson movie. I was losing it at the tweets that were like, uh, please stop having AI make Wes Anderson movies. They keep giving them titles like the Whimsical Fellowship and shit. Wes Anderson has never done that. Literally, like, his title cards are, like, Chicago, Illinois. And then when the AI generates it, it's always, like, the antediluvian dollhouse. Every single shot is just dead center in the frame. Okay, Traveler. Today I'd like to go from Palestine to Cambodia. Holy cow, um, it's a long trip. I hope you're, you're packing a lunch. Okay, let me, let me go here. Just give me a second. Let me think. How did the housing price go up 10% in one year? Brother, last year, everything went up 10% in one year. Except gasoline, which went up like 70% and then down like 180%. And eggs, do you see... Saw a screenshot of eggs at American Costco. 18 eggs for 99 cents. And they were, they were overstuffed. The eggs are cratering, man. Great time to buy eggs. Anyway. Um, I think we need to go to... I mean, the, it would be best to go to... Turkey, I think. That makes sense to me. So let's go like Jordan to Syria. Oh, okay. To, to Turkey. Okay, okay. To Now just give me a sec. We're going to fill in a gap here. We know we're going to want Russia in here, but it doesn't touch Turkey. But Russia is then going to go to China which is then going to go to like Laos, which is now touching Cambodia. Okay, so we just need the connection between Turkey and Russia, which is going to be like um, Azerbaijan. And uh, <laughs> uh, Armenia. He's crazy. He's cracked. Wait, that was a pretty good day for going... As far as we did, two oranges is better to go. Oh, it's actually better to go, at least for travel purposes. It's better to go the like South Asian way, Central Asian, I guess. Jordan, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, China, Laos, Cambodia. It was still pretty good. And the movie to movie dropped while you're doing dulls. Okay. You know what? If I do the movie, then I'm going to have to wait for the movie to movie to drop. What I'm doing dulls to my, well, whatever. Let's put it on there. Oh, we got to do it today because it's the cable guy. Cable guy. One of my favorite comedies. Jim Carrey, Matthew Broderick, Jack Black. Owen Wilson. Leslie Mann, it's got everybody. And the menu, the menu, Anya Taylor-Joy. Nicholas Holt, who's also in The Favorite with Emma Stone and Olivia Coleman. Olivia Coleman, of course, in The Lobster with John C. Riley. John C. Riley, there's, a, there's an easier connection. John Leguizamo is in this. John Leguizamo was also in 
the pest in the 90s, John Leguizamo in the Mario movie with Dennis Hopper, Bob Hoskins, Bob Hoskins, who framed Roger Rabbit with Christopher um, Lloyd, who's in the Adams Family, of course, with Raul Julia, um, Angelica Houston, Christina Ricci, Christina Ricci, uh, Black Snake Moan, Black Snake Moan, of course, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, Samuel L. Jackson takes you to Mars. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> Ray Fiennes, Ray Fiennes, the English patient in Bruges, Colin Farrell. It's, I'm looking for the Jim Carrey connection. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I think I've got something. Because you're an X-Man. You played Cyclops. James Marsden played Cyclops. James Marsden is in Sonic. Did they ever do a Days of Future Past? Nicholas Holt Cyclops meets James Marsden Cyclops. So you go Jim Carrey, Sonic the Hedgehog, James Marsden. X-Men, Days of Future Past, Nicholas Holt, he's fucking insane, he's crazy! That is a, a bit of a lark to have pay out. Nicholas Holt was not Cyclops, he's Beast. Alright, well, whatever, they're in the same movie. <laughs> Shortest? Jim Carrey, Kick-Ass 2, John Leguizamo. Okay, but nobody saw Kick-Ass 2 because it sucked. And right before it came out, uh, Jim Carrey said, don't see this movie. Jim Carrey filmed an ultra-violent, or sorry, ultra-violent action movie. And then in all the press tours said, I abhor violence in all of its forms. And this movie is a bad influence on society. Oh, you're right. Jack Black, Cable Guy, Jack Black, Mario movie, Anya Taylor Joy. That's actually like a two out of 10 difficulty two link performance. That's a classic. That would have been, that's more contemporary. I'll give you that one. Anyway, that was a good, it was a good one. I'm glad we did.